Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. TNA crossed the line again this week. Nick Nemeth made only his second appearance uh, or a second match in TNA. The new Knockouts Tag Team Champions, the Decay, were in action. Macklin certainly makes his presence felt and a two out of three falls tag team main event stole the show. The Impact opened up the first match this week with Nick Nemeth against one member of the Rascals, Trey Miguel. Now, a lot of this match was Zachary Wentz trying to get involved as well. Uh, in this he was to no avail put it that way there was a lot of good back and forth on this match as well in this there was a lot of there was pretty cool super kicks but there was a really good um after a drop kick was hit by Nemeth there was a really good uh cross body as well for a two uh Nemeth even used a stinger splash in this one uh done the 10 elbow drops in a row uh, as well which was really good and it kicked out again at two on that one um and this time when Nemeth went for the super kick, Wentz once again uh, grabbed his leg, causing a distraction in this match. But eventually, as Miguel called for a super kick, he went in, but Nemeth hit one of his own uh, to win the match. But that wasn't the end of the match. Uh, as, Zig, as Nemeth was celebrating, out comes Macklin, who absolutely destroys him. And at the same time, uh, the rascals were in the corner. They join in, and it ends up being a big three-on-one assault. On Mac on Nemeth. So see what happens there. Maybe Nemeth needs some backup. Um, as it went backstage at this point, uh, there was Cody Dina and Kong. And, and basically, as Dina was cutting a promo, um, Kong interrupted and saying the design was dead. And it was time to remind the world who the baddest man in TNA actually is, which is quite interesting. Uh, but more will be revealed on that a bit later on in the show. Um, Rosemary and Havoc, the guests we had on this week, were next against uh, Miller, Moore and Savannah Fawn. This really didn't last long. Uh, the Decay's first match since winning the uh, Knockouts Tag Team Championships. I mean, Rosemary was biting, choking and just really being really violent uh, at the start of this match on Miller, Moore. Um, there was a bit of a tag. When she tagged into Fawn, she did start with a little bit of offense, but Rosemary didn't have any of it. Tagged in Havoc, and as Fawn tried to run away, uh, Moore dropped, actually dropped the apron to avoid being tagged in. Um, Havoc then hit a Death Valley Driver and then hit the combination, Coke Bomb for the win. Um, funnily enough, they went back and they were showing MK Ultra watching the match, uh, Kelly and Slamovich, um, and they want their rematch at No Surrender. And at this point, Jody Threat and Danny Luna walked up and said they want to be in the picture again. They got into a shoving match, Slamovich and Threat, and that sets up the match later on, uh, which was actually quite a good match, and we'll get into that. Um, and then it goes back to Alan Angels, with the debut episode of The Sound Check, with featuring uh, the walking weapon, Joss Alexandra. And he's saying about how Alexandra had to squash some bugs to get to the top, and, uh, you know, but Alexandra was like, he worked hard to get here, and Alex. But Angel shot back and said Alexander didn't give credit to the people that he should have. And he knew who he was talking about. It's interesting at this point. I mean, Alexander, after a bit more of a back and forth, walked out of the interview. I'm interested to see where they go with that. That's an interesting point that he made. And who is he talking about? Who? But he knows. Just Alexander knows who he's talking about, apparently. Interesting. Interesting. But we'll see what happens uh, probably in the next few weeks on Impact. Um, this was a re The next match was really good. It was... Um, Brian Myers against Kevin Knight. Um, really good. I really like Kevin Knight. There's really something more about him that I really like to see. Hopefully Impact. We'll see a lot more of him on Impact. And it was, again, a really good back and forth match on this. But the roster cut from Myers won the actual contest for Brian Myers. But uh, yeah, Kevin Knight look, looks a really good talent. So over the next week or two or week or four, say week or weeks and months, shall we say, on Impact, I'd like to see a bit more uh, from Kevin Knight. He, he looks like a really good talent. Um, next point was Alicia and Eddie Edwards come to the ring uh, after the match and look to be ready to lay a bit more of a beat down on Knight. Um, but out comes Kushida to make the save. So we could be set up a tag team match there. And I'm really interested to see. Now, last week on the Impact Review, one of the things I forgot to mention, because it happened as I stupidly turned off my computer before the end. I thought the end happened last week and then they cut to a promo and I didn't see. 
And the promo was from Mustafa Ali saying that he's basically going to be here in TNA. Now, at this point, they were talking to Chris Sabin. Uh, Gia Miller was talking about Mustafa Ali, indicating he was coming for the X Division title. And as Sabin was actually talking about who Mustafa Ali was and the etc. Another political uh, ad started playing on the TV with clips of Chris Sabin getting beat down and then Ali delivered a monologue about he was going to bring something new to TNA to take out Sabin. But uh, all, all, all I will say about that is Ali versus Chris Sabin. As we say on our, one of our other review shows that we do, take our money. That will be tremendous. I'll be really looking forward to seeing that when Ali does eventually come to Impact Wrestling. And also at that point in the end, uh, Hotch and Skyler come up laughing at Sabin. Um, and basically Sabin said he'll take on Skyler next week, uh, and which he didn't look too pleased about. But uh, Hotch assured him that he'll do fine and that Ali would be watching. So are we going to see Mustafa Ali next week on Impact? We'll have to wait and see. Now, last week you remember that Frankie Kazarian was due to talk about why he did what he did to Eric Young a couple of weeks ago. And he said he would do it this week. And he said at the start of it that the fans are not going to like his explanation of why he turned on Eric Young. But he did say that he was the reason that TNA exists, that he was the one in the video, going into the video, into the water to dig up TNA in the original announcement video. And he was done giving and he wants to start taking. He has been overlooked and it stops now. He had zero desire to be the hero to people. So he's going to become the monster he needs to succeed. And that is really interesting because... You could argue with what he was saying there is 100% true. He's, has Kaz always been overlooked, not just in TNA, but other places? Has he always been the one that could have been, but never was? And now he thinks he doesn't have to appease the fans to get where he needs to get to. So a really interesting one there from Kazarian. And I'll be interested to see where that leads to next. Obviously, there'll be a match with Eric Young, but yeah, very interesting on that. I'm looking forward to it. And the system were backstage celebrating at that point, but Alex Shelley broke it up, challenging Moose for his TNA rematch. And he would be fighting at Moose at no surrender, but if he wanted to, he could go tonight. Moose said, no, nah. <laughs> not tonight. So he's going against, against no surrender. So it'll be Shelley and Moose for the rematch at no surrender, which would be really good if it's anything like their match at Hard to Kill. It will be great. Um, another Ash by Elegance video aired. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the artist formerly known as Dana Brooke can do in TNA. He, she always was the one trying in WWE, but for whatever reason, didn't succeed. We don't know what reason that is. She may get her opportunity uh, at TNA, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what she can do. Right now, it comes to the point where Cody, Cody Dina come to the ring. He was looking really distressed. But he did say that he had to admit it, that the design was over now. And gave like, and some fans gave <laughs> really kind of dramatic and probably sarcastic no at that point to that. And Dina said he was wrong and he think he could resurrect violent by design. And if something was dead, it could never come back. And of course, you know what happens when you say that. Here comes PCO. <laughs> And he literally didn't take him long. He hit a code breaker in the corner and inverted DDT, PCO salt, and this was done. But Con ran down after the match and took out PCO. And at that point, you're thinking, Violent by Design might actually be back. Not Maybe they're not dead. And then Con absolutely obliterated Cody Dino at the same time. Um, he basically done a killer of a clothesline of Dino as well. Um, and also hit a choke slam on PCO and done the Iron Claw. So it really looks like Con is trying to make his own name uh, in, in TNA, going alone. And again, he's another one. WWE as part of the Ascension, I think it was, you know, about, oh, maybe about eight or so years ago now. Someone else has got some potential there about him. And are we going to see him carve out his own uh, legacy in TNA as a single? And I'm I'm, I'm all here for it, actually. We'll, we'll see. Let's see what happens with that. Um, at the back, uh, AJ Francis uh, walked up to Rich Swan, offered to manage him. Uh, addressing Swan losing because uh, Joe Hendry beat Swan on Explosion, which now airs on a Friday, by the way. Um, Swan didn't basically buy it. And uh, as he's done that, Rhino walked by and Francis uh, asked him if he needed any help with Crazy Steve. And uh, Rhino told him to fuck off. <laughs> it's literally his words, fuck off. Um and in fact, a hilarious line after this was uh, AJ Francis saying, see, that's why rhinos are going extinct. You can't trust him. I'll tell you what, like, 
I don't know with AJ Francis, obviously top doll in WWE didn't work. This I like. Will we see him in the ring? I'm not too sure. And maybe maybe when we get when we when he does come in the ring, we may may uh, I may relive to regret these words. But I'm looking forward to seeing this version of AJ Francis in TNA. We'll find out how that happens and how that goes. Um but we cut to a really nice package actually after this and a really nice video with Jordan Grace. Now, for those of you that don't know, Jordan Grace was a surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble uh, this past weekend. She killed it for TNA. Lots of references to her. Apparently, she blew people away in WWE backstage. Not hinting that she's going, although my words on the review show may have said that, uh, that she'll be in WWE when her contract expires. But... She was absolutely fantastic. And I think there may be a door open in here to see some WWE uh, women go over to TNA. There's been talk of a Natalia match on Bianca Belair. I'm not sure WWE would let Bianca Belair go to Impact. I think that if any of the women from WWE come to Impact Wrestling to take on Jordan Grace, they lose. I'm not sure that WWE would let Bianca Belair lose to Jordan Grace on TNA. Um, Natalia, on the other hand, maybe that and that could be something that we'll be seeing in the future who knows hope so anyway that's a good and it even showed about the backstage itself uh talking to michael cole and corey graves and how she by beat naomi for the knockouts championship as well which is interesting um the next match was really quick but really hard hitting um masha slamovich uh defeated jody fret on this and as the build continued uh for mk ultra's rematch with a decay um, it was more competitive though than some of the, it was like a modified squash, if that makes sense. It was a bit more, a bit more offense from Jody Fred than what you'd normally get uh, in it. But she uh, managed, Slavich still managed to hit the snow plow after Killer Kelly distracted Fred. Although Danny Luna did try to make the save or did make the save at some point as well. Um, there was a bit where the system was shown backstage on Kushida, uh, beating on Kushida. Um, so I think that was to do with, uh, you know, him uh, saving Knight early on in the show. So again, that could set up a little bit of a tag, maybe a, a six man. And there you go. Maybe that could well be um, Alex Shelley and Kushida time splitters reuniting. Who knows? Um, this, the main event of the evening was the Grizzled Young Veterans uh, versus a uh, Bullet Club ABC. Now, in a best of two out of three series matches, not two out of three falls, two out of three series. It's a three matches you probably know that it's going to go one all and it, we're going to go to the last match to win it. But this was a brilliant, brilliant match. If you love your tag team wrestling and you like, um, well, I would say real old school, not even old school, old school tag team match, but brought into the into 2024, this is the match for you. It was brilliant. It sort of gave you the past and the present style of wrestling amalgamated together into one and resulted in the Grizzled Young Veterans taking a 1-0 lead in the series of best of three. I think the, best, the second match may be next week. I'm assuming at that point Bullet Club will get the win and it maybe goes to no surrender as the third match and they continue a little build towards that perhaps. But another solid episode of Impact Wrestling, uh, Naomi, or Trinity, makes her farewell match next week. I believe Jordan, she's teaming with Jordan Grace next week, I think. Um, we'll have a look at that next week as well. But what another great show for TNA Impact. Really enjoyed it again. We can't wait until next week uh, for another episode of TNA Impact. But we're going to be back with reviews of AEW Dynamite, Monday Night Raw, uh, and then obviously at Ignite on Sunday for the uh, Ignite Championship being defended, smashing Mike against Eddie Dennis. And until next time, or until then, everybody, buckle down and stay safe.